to another episode of the One More Stitch Knitting Podcast. Uh, welcome if you are new or welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Um, first, I'd like to say a very big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Uh, we have hit 1,000 subscribers, which is really crazy. And I will be talking a little bit about um, how to enter my 1,000 subscriber giveaway at the end of the video. Okay. So I know it's been quite a while since the last time I recorded and posted. Um, the holidays were really busy, I spent a lot of time with family and have some time off of work, but once we returned back to work, uh, it got more busy <laughs> this year already and I started a new semester of school. So life has just been really busy and I finally had a chance to sit down and talk about what I'm knitting on and other various things going on. So. Let's jump right into it. Um, I will start with what I am currently wearing right now. So this is the Fairy Bouquet Sweater, and it is by Joanna Ang. I test knit this pattern for her, um, and it has a really pretty yoke detail, as you can see, as well as these little Fairy Bouquet Butterfly details on the side of the arm. So I knit this up in a 100% alpaca yarn from a local-ish farm to me um, and I was able to like pick out from which alpaca the yarn came from so that was really cool because I got to see the alpaca and actually know like what animal it came from and how they're treated which is really greatly. Okay let's get into some finished objects. Um, two finished objects I don't have with me right now. I forgot I left it in the car. Um, so it is the... I will also pop in a picture here just so you can see. So the first finished object is the Purr Hat and it is by Vivian Xiao Chen. And she is a really great sewist and has some really amazing sewing patterns as well as she is starting to roll out some new knitting patterns, which is very exciting. Um, I am I test knit the Purr Hat for her, and also te I'm currently test knitting another pattern for her, which I will get into at a later time. Um, I knitted up in Lime Brand Woolies, and it turned out really nicely. It's in these, this uh, oatmeal heathery color, which is very versatile, and I really enjoy the fit of it. And you can also see the picture on my Ravelry and my Instagram page. Oh, and before I forget, you can find me at Ray Knits on uh, Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, and here on YouTube. Okay, my next pattern is, or my next finished object is the Moreland Mittens by Tanya of uh, the Woolbarrow. And I saw this pattern go around so much on Instagram, especially from like Amy Cher um, and the Cozy Cardigans podcast by Mel. I was very inspired by uh, their knits. So I figured I'd jump on the bandwagon as well. Um, um, my friend Knit Crits, who is Carla, uh, she also has a knitting podcast called Knit Crits. Um, she also knitted up and she knit a uh, like a reverse, no, not a reversible, she knit a convertible mitten where you can like flip off the top. Um, it's also in my car so I will insert a picture um, and you probably also saw it in the introduction when I took it hiking. Uh, they're very warm and I hope to also follow in Carla's footsteps and knit a convertible mitten. Um, oh and Mel also made a convertible mitten so following both of their footsteps in creating a convertible one. Um, the pattern is really addicting to knit, so I will probably knit quite a few more and for other people as well. So I'm very excited to do that. Uh, and lastly, oh, sorry, I have two more finished objects. The one you can see right here. Uh, I won't pull it off right now, but so this is the transition slipover and it was a test knit by Amy Sher Makes. Uh, I tested this for her in the um, We Are Knitters Petite Wool and it's a single ply roving type of yarn if you don't know already. Um, it's super super warm and I actually really enjoy the style and how it looks on me. Uh, I also post a picture of it on my Instagram. And as you can see I am still missing a few buttons because I had buttons planned for it. And then I organized another 
gone. <laughs> I've organized them into disappearing. Um, so yeah, that's great. And I will add on the buttons as soon as I find them or when I order some more buttons. Uh, and lastly, I have here the Omela sweater, also a sweater dress if you'd like. Um, and it was also a test knit uh, for Tati's Knit Garden. So Tati again creates a lot of really intricate designs and really new designs to me. Um, I always learn a new technique from her test knits and her patterns in general. So it has these like poofy sleeves. It actually like increases and becomes a big poof. And it also has this really pretty like color work lace type of detail. It's not really a nice lace. It's just like a interesting way of uh, creating this pattern. But I don't want to like spill too much because it is a paid for pattern. And I posted a picture of me wearing it on my Instagram as well. Um, and just to show what it looks like on the inside with the floats, um, it looks like this. And I knit it up in knitted in yarn. And this is in the colors Fristina, which is a gray, and then Pupulin, which is the teal blue color. Yeah, it's super warm and like very relaxed fit so that you can like wear it at home when you're relaxing on the couch and knitting or you can wear it out as well as like an outer layer. Um, so yeah, that's all of the finished objects that I have for you today. Um, didn't get too too much done over the holiday break but I tried <laughs> moving a little right along for my works in progress first one I want to show you is this sweater and this is the Papuria sweater also a test knit for Teddy's Knit Garden so it has this really, really pretty all over cable on the body. It starts off with like smaller cables and then it just like grows. And I'll show the back to like give you the full effect because I finished the back. Um, it slits off down the sides. So I'm working on the front slit. So yeah, the cables just like grow and it's really gorgeous. Um, after binding off, it is flaring out a little bit, but that'll be sorted out once I block the finished garment. And I also tried it on earlier today and it fits really, really well, but the cables after blocking will just relax a little bit more. I really enjoyed knitting this. It was really enjoyable to knit because um, I like having checkpoints and every time we do the cabling section, it feels like another checkpoint that was accomplished. So it makes the project feel like it's going by a lot qu quicker. Oh, and this is also knit up in knitted in yarn and it is in the colorway parallel. And I am really happy with how it is turning out right now. Uh, I've been working on it for a while and just goes by really fast. Uh, it does have like a turtleneck for the neck part. But I find that when I try it on it like sits a little bit away from my neck. So it decreases the amount of sensitivity <laughs> to like pokiness. And here is the colorway up close. And then my next work in progress 
is housed in this very cute project bag by Blue Rabbit House. I really like her project bags because she illustrates the design and then has it printed for her. So uh, I just find each of them like really unique and I have my collection of her bags are slowly growing larger and larger because I just love all of the illustrations and I can't have them all. <laughs> so I have some in like various sizes. So in here I have this is the Highland Slipover, and it is by uh, Haley of Azetta. That's the back. I'm almost done with the body. Uh, I just have like three more inches to go, and then I will do the hem. And all I will have after that is the sleeve cuffs and the neckband. Uh, the thing I like about slipovers is that I feel like they go by really quickly because I don't have to knit sleeves. And as you've seen in some of my prior episodes, I am always stuck on Sleeve Island, so slipovers are great. And I just want to show you the yarn that I'm using. This is also knit up in Nutiden yarn, shocker, um, and it is in the colorway Shishpinea. And it's this like gray base with some pink in it. And this pattern will be coming out really soon. Uh, the test it period ends next week. So I hope to finish it by this weekend. Yeah, and an up close of the project bag. Okay. And two more whips to go through. Oh no. Some of my stitches have slipped off, so I'm just gonna pick them up really quickly. So this I have here is yet again another test knit. Uh, so this is a test knit for the Petite Knitter. Um, so Wei Chen is the designer behind the Petite Knitter and she creates a lot of really gorgeous color work patterns. Um, all of her patterns are amazing and I want to knit them all but they take longer to knit and I haven't had a chance to sit down and knit the other ones so I was really excited when the opportunity arose to test knit for her. So this is the caribou jumper. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. And I am knitting this up in Platulopi in the dark grey and the white shade. So far I have part of the yoke done. I'm by no means done knitting this yet, but I hope to get some more done this weekend as well. Ah, the stitches continue to slip off. I think I'm using like 24 inch um, cables which is uh, getting a little short, <laughs> but I prefer to have the cables a little um, shorter than too long so that when I'm knitting, I don't have to constantly be like shuffling all the stitches over to get it on onto the actual needle. So when I'm not showing it on camera, I really enjoy the shorter needles <laughs> to knit with. Oh, and let me see. So I have a bunch of these little like stitch markers and they're by Sam of uh, From Sai. I believe this one's like the one of the clay ones. Mm. 
not sure if you can see it too well, but she has a lot of really, really cute stitch markers. Um, again, I have a bunch of them all over my projects. Um, they're really easy to misplace as well, so that's why I get a lot of them. Just so I always have some available or on hand. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to finish this yoke. It's an all-over colorwork pattern. Um, on the body, it goes down to like almost like little polka dots on the body. That'll be fun. And it's knit in a single strand of each color. Also, let me know if you want me to do like a little short video on um, like all about uh, knitting with like unspun yarns or just like pre-yarns, unspun roving type of yarns such as like Nutidin or Platulopi. Um, that'll be a pretty fun video for me to make so let me know down below if you would like to see something like that. Um, okay, moving right along. My next work in progress is another test knit. Uh, so as I stated at the beginning, um, this is a test knit by Vivian of Vivian Shao Chen. I don't have too much to show, but it is a um, sweater that's going to be knit up in half brioche. And I'm knitting this up in Cascade 220. It was in my stash and um, my gauge and the yards per grams uh, matched really well with uh, what Vivian used, which is Focolana Peruvian Highland wool. So I decided to go with this. And I also really enjoy this like burgundy wine type of red colors. So I finished the top half of the back and I'm working on one of the shoulder pieces for the fronts. Um, hopefully I'll be able to connect everything by the end of today. Uh, this pattern will also be coming out fairly shortly, uh, I think in like mid to end February. So yeah, look out for it. Uh, so something that I find interesting about the pattern is typically designers will have like the so-called right side of half brioche, half fisherman's rib, etc. on the right side of the pattern. But Vivian actually has it, has like the, um, the wrong side of half brioche on the right side of her pattern, which gives it like a very interesting look. Um, if you've knit half brioche or half fisherman's rib before, you know that on the wrong side there will be like two knit stitches for every, um, for every like brioche knit stitch on the other side. So it looks really interesting because one of the two knit stitches are more like pronounced than the other. Yeah, I'm really enjoying knitting this up. Um, Vivian's always like really clear in her patterns and she does a really great job of listening to her test knitters um, when finding mistakes or changing up some of the wording. And something I love about like brioche, half fisherman's rib, half brioche is that the resulting like fabric always comes out super, super squishy. These are just like so much air in it. And it's also like all knit double. So yeah, I really like that. Okay, so that concludes all my knitting stuff. And then next up, I will have some of my acquisitions. Um, I don't have too, too much today just because I haven't had a chance to yarn shop in December or since now of January. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, if you don't enjoy looking at other people's acquisitions, then feel free to skip to the end of the video in my outro and we're talk about um, the giveaway that will be happening. And if you do enjoy acquisitions, then stay tuned. 
Okay, so first off, I wanted to give a little shout out to a local yarn shop. Um, there aren't too, too many here in California, but I've been trying to like uh, visit some more of my local yarn shops. So some of the past ones I've mentioned are uh, like Nordic Nest and they have a lot of Sandus Garn yarn and um, another one is Uncommon Threads and they just have a bunch of like higher end types of yarns. And then now this one is the third local yarn shop that I have gone to and I literally just went there today. Um, I have an exciting video coming out soon. Um, so that's why I went to go visit them. And uh, the shop owner, Kelly, is super nice and friendly. So yeah, I got some of their yarns. And oh yeah, it's the Royal Bee Yarn Company. And they're located in Pacifica, California. So they mostly have uh, merino yarns. And I wanted to try their woolen spun merino yarn. And this is fine merino, so it's really soft for a woolen spun. Uh, they also have uh, worsted spun merino, which is extra fine, and that is so, so, so soft. So here is a close-up of the colorway I got, uh, and it is part of the Pacifica Coastside collection, and it's this, like, gray-blue color. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Pacifica fog when it um when it's not sunny outside so today here in the bay area it was extremely warm it's like six it hit like 68 degrees today which is crazy for the middle of january um and i can't really imagine how other people living in actual cold weather are feeling um when it's like negative snowing so yeah i feel very lucky to not be in freezing temperatures Yeah, here's the yarn. Uh, it's super squishy, which I really like. And it's a DK weight. And I got three skeins of this. So what I was thinking of making is the Spring Sorrel Sweater by uh, Wool and Pine. And I also picked up um, one of the Fingering Weight Extra Fine Merino Blends. And this is one of their hand-dyed um, colorways, and it's called Carl Eats Blueberry Pie in the Sky. So all of their colorways have like very cute names. Yeah, here's a close-up. And this is like um, blueberry color. Uh, so, the Royal Bee sources like all of their uh, wools and where they get the wools from. And uh, let's see, so this one is eco friendly fiber sourced, custom milled, and hand dyed in the US. So, some of their newer uh, fingering weight extra fine merinos are made in Peru, where she also sources yarn from. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And then next up. So, um, one of my first knitting friends that I met on Instagram is Nicole. Uh, you can find her at Nicole Knits on Instagram. Uh, we found out that we are local to each other, which was really awesome. So we decided to do like a little yarn holiday gift swap um, where we wanted to knit some of the petite knit accessories, like the little bags, the clutches, the honey bucket, winter clutch. So we decided to do a little yarn swap. So what I got from her is the Dairy Realm, Dairy Realm Natural. Um, Ulysses yarn and it is the merino I believe is it merino wool but it's 100% wool it's really soft which is why I'm wondering if it's merino so I've never tried this brand before they also make the yarn Gilead Gilead I'm not sure how to pronounce it 
Um, but now I kind of want to try that yarn as well because this one feels so nice and I want a sweater's quantity of it. So it runs at 100 meter, oh sorry, 185 meters per 50 grams of yarn. So each of these balls are 50 grams. Mm, yeah, I think it's um like a DK weight. Maybe like a sport, sport DK. Yeah. So a lot of like petite knits, um, clutch bag patterns are like one strand of like Sunday mixed with one strand of mohair. So this is a similar weight to that. And I'm very excited to try it out. And with that, Nicole also sent me some of the accessories for uh, knitting up the petite knit patterns. So this here is the winter clutch, um, like the bag frame. So it's one of those like clutch frames where you can like open it and then like squish it back close together and it stays like that. It has like the rectangular top opening shape. We tried for a while to like find a seller from the US but you know Petite Knit is just really good at sourcing these hardware items that only she can find. So. Nicole was kind enough to send this over to me in her order. Uh, and she also gave me one of the petite knit zippers for the honey, honey clutch or the honey purse. One of those. So I'm very excited to start on these. Um, we'll probably end up knitting it together and doing like a little cow together. Um, so yeah. And along with that, what I gifted to her was the, what I gifted to her were the materials to make um, the honey bucket and a honey purse or a honey clutch, one of those, the smaller ones. So I got what Petite Knit uses, which is Sunday. One strand of Sunday mixed with one strand of the Tin Silk Mohair, all by Sundisgarn. And I got these from Nordic Nest. Um, so the owner of Nordic Nest, Annette, helped me pick out, pick out like some of the color combinations. Um, I wanted to do like this green with the matching mohair but I think there's like a shortage of Santa Scarn in the US and she wasn't able to get the matching mohair. So I decided to go with another color combination and Annette was kind enough to like send me a whole bunch of color combinations and we decided to go with this green with the gray mohair. And it's really pretty together actually and I'm also very excited to knit this. So the tin silk mohair is 57% mohair, 28% silk, and 15% wool. So that makes it like incredibly soft and not itchy at all. And I would definitely knit this up in a sweater quantity. Or at least like hold it with a strand of fingering weight yarn. And Sunday is also like a 100% wool yarn. It's also incredibly soft and not scratchy at all, and it's also not super wash. Uh, with that, I also sent Nicole some of the honey bucket bag um, chains. And these could also be used on the winter clutch, so that's why there are two here. So I also sent Nicole two of these uh, in different colors. She got the silver and the bronze color. I decided to get the gunmetal and the bronze. And this is from an Etsy seller, which I can also link down below. And it's corresponding little D-rings. I think that 
that is all. Um, my table is completely full of whips and yarn, <laughs> which is a nice sight to see. Uh, I guess now we can go into talking a little bit about the giveaway. So, to celebrate my 1,000 subscriber milestone, I wanted to give back, of course. And uh, one of my previous episodes, you saw that Line Day sent me an extra copy of the Stripes book. So this will be a part of the giveaway. I will also be including in the giveaway a sampler of my yarns. So these are 20 gram mini skeins of all the colorways from my first collection, including a different color that was not included in my uh, first collection. So there are six colors here. Together, they're like really fun and colorful. Uh, and they are in the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Soft Yarns or Fingering Weight Yarns. So this is Ube, Mung Bean, Milk Tea, Double Yolk, and Butterfly Tea. And this one is Grapefruit, which I didn't include. Um, but yeah, you will get all six of these colors in the mini skein. And the Sharps book. Um, so for now, hopefully I can find a cheap way of uh, shipping internationally if the winner does indeed come from another country. But the giveaway will be open worldwide, which will be super fun. Uh, if there are shipping limitations, then unfortunately I will have to skip to the next winner uh, just because I'm not sure exactly like what the um, what the postage is going to cost for international shipping to various countries. Um, hopefully everything will work out and I can ship to wherever you are. So the rules for the giveaway is you must be a subscriber. You must like the video, um, follow me on Instagram, and then comment down below um, what project you are most looking forward to knitting up in the year 2022. Yeah, those are the four conditions for you to enter into my giveaway. Uh, I'll leave it open for about two weeks, and then I will come back to pick a winner with a random picker selector generator from the internet. And from there, um, oh, sorry, one more condition, please leave me a way to contact you, um, preferably on Instagram, and I can then reach out to you if you do indeed win the giveaway. So I hope you are excited for it, uh, as excited as it for it as I am, that I can't even speak correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you again for watching my videos and listening to me talk about knitting and talking about yarn for so long. Uh, I hope that you return and continue to keep up with my podcast episodes and happy new year to everyone out there. I hope this year brings some goodness into all of our hearts and into our lives. So with that, I will leave you to it and keep knitting. See you later. Bye.